Hey guys, welcome to all of you on our channel that is Achieve IAS. So friends, as you know that on our channel we are targeting the exam of civil services and for that purpose we have started multiple series on our channel that target your prelims as well as mains. So in this video we will be talking about our uh, daily uh, 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 news discussion series in which what we do we daily discuss uh, important articles from your uh, uh, Indian Express newspaper. Uh, so today is uh, uh, 22 October. So let's see what are the articles for today uh, that uh, that are uh, that uh, require attention that must be discussed. So the first article that we will be discussing is Cape Cod Hajela. So uh, friends, this article is in context of uh, the NRC exercise that is being undertaken in uh, Assam to identify the illegal immigrants. So uh, basically article talks about uh, the whole process NRC so uh, it not just uh, talks about whole process but the idea behind it. So the author according to author this is a, uh, a fraud exercise because uh, the list that was published on August 31 that excluded 90 la 19 lakh uh, people from the NRC final N N uh, NRC. Uh, the uh, author says that this uh, final list published uh, has not been acceptable to any of the groups, groups, and especially the uh, ruling party, the BJP, that is that uh, that has uh, pitched for long, uh, long time for this exercise. So, in this context, uh, the author says that the bureaucrat who was uh, who was given the responsibility in this context, that is Pratik Hajela. So he has been ended up. He has ended up as the main target of all those who have found the NRC un unacceptable. So why people are founding on people uh, NRC unacceptable? Because uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the different uh, political and social groups in Assam they say that 19 lakh is too few uh, too fewer number uh, than they expected, and uh, uh, actual number must be uh, very high. So in this context, uh, author highlights that uh, uh, this is uh, this this was basically a fraud idea because uh, in today's world, when uh, 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 when th there is a, uh, there is kind of uh, excessive migration and uh, in today's globalized village, when we try to identify uh, immigrants, then it becomes difficult. So only crime basically uh, of the of uh, of Hajela in this context was he failed to deliver on the expectations of different Assamese groups. So nine. 19 lakh people though they have been uh, excluded but it has also been observed that they are not just be, uh, uh, as earlier it was assumed that uh, uh, they will be they will uh, they will be these uh, these people will be those who uh, who will be uh, of particular religion so it has been found that uh, not uh, this 19 lakh people don't do not belong to a single homogeneous homogeneous group so their religious identity is different and there are also there are also variances uh, in various types of identities that they have so in this context uh, the, uh, the the uh, basically in uh, author also highlights that in in today's world when there is a culture of maintaining documents relating to citizenship uh, it is uh, it is relatively to uh, new to many indians uh, uh, because nation state uh, is uh, uh, as a uh, in india amassed quite late in the early 20th century so in this context, author says that many Indians uh, don't have uh, these uh, documents, but this argument is not that convincing of the author as per my viewpoint, uh, because uh, already the document uh, the documents that are being demanded they are after 1950s. But yes, the the point is that uh, uh, it is difficult. Uh, but uh, if uh, quite a few years back uh, there were there were floods in uh, uh, West Bengal and in Assam also when people lost their documents relating to citizenship. So there are concerns that genuine citizenships, uh, uh, genuine citizens have been left out of this NRC, and there are also claims that uh, uh, that there has there have been inclusion errors as well because uh, those people who are not uh, having uh, correct documents they have been included. So in this context, author says that uh, 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 the BJP has promised that uh, citizenship act will be amended so that uh, the, uh, the Hindus who have been excluded from this NRC they are given the citizenship right. So this uh, particular uh, uh, proposition or the uh, or the claim of the BJP has been opposed by many uh, Assamese groups who are as 
associated with the entire process uh, they say that uh, this uh, this uh, process of identification should not be on the basis of any religion and the problem is of the uh, illegal migration and it must be viewed uh, as a secular thing uh, because if there is any illegal migrant with, uh, with uh, of whatever religion he is he must be uh, he, he must be uh, kind, kind of we can say turn back so where to turn back there is also no answer of this uh, and then uh, also complexity is that that uh, the, uh, this uh, this exercise is completely complex so cost uh, it has incurred a loss 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 of uh, lots of uh, cost and also author says that it is difficult for any bureaucracy to de deliver on such a foolproof or a universal universally accepted nrc because in today's world when the migration is taking place and uh, my, uh, uh, it is uh, it is a uh, uh, this migration is triggered by your uh, uh, political, geographical, and economic reasons. And uh, in this context, author says the uh, politicians who uh, uh, who fan fears around the specter of migrant populations, assuming indigenous cultures, and claim that there are bureaucratic solutions to reverse migration, are uh, being blind to historical processes. So here, authors in the, the entire motive of the author is to uh, kind of uh, say that those who have been uh, 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 those political that political leadership which is involved in uh, uh, fanning up such fears fears is wrong in its uh, conception itself because uh, obviously one can't return to a time uh, uh, that has already passed so also then uh, in this context author says that the onus is on nrc so that uh, nrc is insulent uh, now insulated from uh, uh, political pressures and also then author talks about then uh, uh, that uh, now these 19 lakh people who have been excluded they have filed appeals in foreign tribune foreigners tribunals so it remains to be seen uh, uh, that how foreigners tribunals adjudicate upon them uh, in what manner they adjudicate and it author says it is necessary that uh, uh, a vigil must be uh, over over these foreigner foreigners tribunals by by the supreme court so that they can uh, they they function in a free and fair manner and not no political uh, uh, grouping or party is uh, uh, could be able to to uh, to influence their decision making process of these foreigners tribunals and also then uh, state must also think about the future of a large number of people who are likely to be rendered stateless once the appeal process is completed so obviously when once the appeal process will be complete then what to do with the citizens who what to do with the persons who have not been uh, proved as citizens of india because we are saying to the bangladesh prime minister that we will not return um, any of uh, 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 the uh, persons because this is entirely an internal process then uh, then how can we how we will deal with such a problem it, uh, uh, is a big question question now <clears throat> to which nobody has answer as of now so other thing is uh, here you can uh, if uh, you want to add on then you can to add, add on the basis of that there is cost cost issues with nrc and then one more effective solution that you can uh, uh, quote here is that uh, for example india has a work permit agreement with uh, nepal so that sort of mechanism can also be worked out with bangladesh so because if for example people are migrating from bangladesh to india and then we must uh, think uh, think practical solutions like uh, 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 developing a framework in which migration can be regulated so that uh, work related migration is allowed and uh, proper uh, we can say for mechanism must be there in place to 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 ensure that the people get uh, um, uh, equal opportunities and the uh, hosting state or the hosting population doesn't suffer so such type of uh, practical solutions can need to be figured out but uh, uh, not uh, this uh, nrc exercise which has ultimately proved to be a uh, we can say a failure and that's why the people are now the different political groups are targeting the bureaucrat who was under the uh, who was uh, undertaking the supervision of this entire process and he was mandated by the supreme court but ultimately he was doing his duty so he could not be uh, held responsible but uh, but now uh, political interest groups are uh, targeting him so this is basically the article now next article is about your don't sing in pili Pili so this article we will not go into that detail so this is in context of uh, a news in which it was reported that in Pili Bhit district a headmaster of a government school uh, made to uh, made uh, made the students to uh, to pray in Urdu language uh, uh, to made made the students pray uh, uh, do a uh, Urdu prayer. So here the author says that uh, 
the entire thing was different so uh, he talks about the meaning of uh, that prayer uh, that uh, what was the actual meaning so you can uh, see the meaning here so uh, in the entire paragraph is about its meaning and in this context author uh, uh, what but you need to understand is a few constitutional provisions for example uh, uh, the uh, this is basically uh, the constitutional provisions are being talked about here so in this paragraph so in the, in this entire article you can read about this paragraph but certainly such type of articles uh, what they uh, what they help in they they widen your perspective they give you a, um, a particular viewpoint to look at the uh, look at the uh, look at different things with the, with the perspective so if you wish to uh, read then you can read but it is not necessary to read this article so if you are aware of such provisions for example article 28 uh, 28 and then uh, um, schedule 8 of the indian constitution then article 351 and then article 29 so all these things must be kept in mind uh, while such a thing while such debates come uh, out uh, so such can be such uh, questions cannot be directly asked to you but yes it is a debate about the uh, as per the different provisions of the constitution so you can um, look at the constitutional perspective of this debate now let's move to the next article next uh, is no yes and no no we will not discuss this article uh, this is about brexit and this article is not uh, important from uh, exam point of view as well as from your uh, uh, general viewpoint uh, so if you are interested in such type of things for example dramas and films then you can uh, read this article otherwise you no, uh, otherwise you don't don't need not uh, you need not uh, read this article next article is about your future tense so here uh, the author is uh, Karan Singh that is the uh, son of the former uh, uh, ruler of uh, Jammu and Kashmir uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the earlier Jammu and Kashmir uh, uh, we can say uh, a princely state uh, that was in the time of British Raj. He is the son of uh, Hari Singh, that is uh, uh, who was uh, who was basically uh, uh, who ruled Jammu and Kashmir pr uh, prior to independence. So he talks about the imminent dangers that uh, India, uh, India, or in fact Pakistan and uh, all the uh, all the all the entire world faces. So first here uh, the author talks about the climate change. So uh, uh, the uh, author talks about that there is continuing uh, environmental degradation that is taking place and then there is global warming that is taking place and it is re re leading to serious problems. So air that is there and uh, air and water are being polluted and uh, unless this trend is reversed so these uh, it will create health problems, spread health problems in the years and decades to come. So then also one of the um, most, uh, uh, most serious challenges facing the human race author says that it is the climate change so as it uh, d does impact the entire world without any exception so it can only be tackled by a global cooperation so on a global basis uh, such uh, threats can be tackled because climate uh, uh, climate uh, the entire mechanism of climate is interrelated so it is not that uh, uh, one nation can claim that uh, uh, that uh, climate change will not affect us so in this context author says that it is worrisome that uh, the most powerful country of the world that is the united nations uh, has pulled out of the painstakingly crafted Paris Agreement. So then uh, author talks about that there are extreme weather events that are happening. For example, there are uh, there are prolonged rainfalls in some areas of the uh, country in which cities are drawn and in, uh, and simultaneously in other areas droughts are being uh, are being experienced and then uh, uh, then melting of glaciers is taking place due to ocean due to which ocean levels are rise and it is expected that in coming two decades uh, uh, um, uh, uh, more than more than at, uh, or at least a dozen countries will disappear from the face of the earth from, or the, from the map of the earth so uh, fact is also that animals plants and species is, are becoming extinct uh, so this is also a worrisome uh, thing and uh, then erratic weather patterns are there droughts are there and this impacts the livelihood of millions of population so for example if uh, there are farmers then they will be certainly affected by the floods as well as the droughts and also great himalayan range is also uh, now threatened because population and the sacred streams uh, uh, sorry because, uh, uh, threatened because there is excessive pollution in this range and sacred streams uh, that emerge from there for example Ganga they are also uh, heavily polluted and uh, environment uh, pollution threatens the livelihood of millions of people so uh, millions of citizens 
so basically uh, for example people dependent upon uh, agriculture people dependent upon tourism people dependent upon ecological services so all these things will be impacted so in this context it will deteriorate the uh, livelihood of millions of people and it it will further lead to uh, to civil strife or civil conflicts and also ca it can widen interstate conflicts or the sharing of river water so it is not just interstate conflicts but also national con conflicts can take place over the sharing of the different resources so then uh, second and even more serious concern is with regard to the possibility of a nuclear conflict so in second part of the article the author talks about the possibility that is there between india and pakistan uh, of nuclear war so here uh, author, uh, author says that it would be immature to dismiss uh, the uh, pakistan's claim that uh, that a nuclear uh, nuclear uh, uh, war can uh, the, the the we can say different differences can escalate to a nuclear war so it would be immature to neglect because th these words are not uttered uh, are uttered by uh, uh, by by a person who is the prime minister of a country that is uh, imran khan so obviously the fear is not that either india uh, will be uh, or pakistan will be unwise to start a nuclear war so here author the points out a very important thing that it is not that india or pakistan will start that they will be the tr uh, they will be the triggers basically for example as of now we have adopted a kind of we can say aggressive policy stand uh, that uh, that we will not uh, tolerate any terror attack on indian soil um, that is launched from pakistan so even if pakistan t uh, takes preventive measures if a terrorist organization that uh, that uh, that ignores uh, the uh, pakistan uh, authorities and it launches uh, any terror attack in india and uh, it is it would lead to the uh, it, it will obviously it would obviously transform into in, uh, in the form of an indian response to that attack so this retaliation could lead to a major conflict so that is a issue of concern because uh, once conflict began um, again it would be it would be difficult to control it so what this means in effect is that the destiny of our children and grandchildren rests not with the governments of our two countries but also with the rogue terror that the groups fueled fueled by fundamentalist ideology so then uh, author also talks about uh, that uh, um, uh, author gives about uh, example of a uh, organization islamist leader in pakistan who said that uh, even if uh, nuclear war uh, starts then uh, even if we we get wiped out by this war but we will also wipe out uh, these uh, the uh, the Hind uh, uh, Hindu, uh, idol, uh, idolatrous Hinduism from the face of the earth. So this is not a thing that must be hated or that must be, uh, we can say, that must fuel uh, uh, angry reactions from Indian side. Uh, these are real dangers and uh, both the countries must consider these real dangers that we, uh, we as a humanity are facing. So uh, uh, then, uh, other thing is that as of now, author says that the, between the Indo-Pak Indo bilateral relationship, the terrorists have taken a good hold because India has also maintained a stance that uh, uh, that India will not uh, talk uh, as long as terrorism. Uh, uh, is not uh, controlled by Pakistan. So in this context, uh, 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 then also author says that uh, the Prime Minister's every speech, the, Pakistan, the Prime Minister of Pakistan's every speech ends uh, with a warning of a nuclear war. So may, we may dismiss it, th this as bluster, but he is uh, he's the duly elected Prime Minister of a country with nuclear bombs and therefore we also have to take his threat seriously. So earlier reports uh, uh, have also been observed in which it is being said that uh, Pakistan is developing tactical nuclear weapons which could be used in a ground war. So this obviously leads to the threat of a catastrophic conflict. So in the light of these developments, so uh, it is necessary, author says, that, uh, that the government of India seriously considers these threats and uh, uh, work must be done to defuse the tension. So also other thing is that uh, uh, the author says that the experts or anchors uh, to, or uh, uh, some some politicians uh, they uh, they uh, they dismiss this possibility of a nuclear conflict with a, we can uh, with a in a casual manner that it is not possible. But then the author says that uh, 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 they don't have the idea that uh, uh, what would it lead to even if uh, there is a, a, a nuclear uh, war uh, for one hour. So it will millions will be wiped out from the from uh, from the subcontinent and large parts of subcontinent would become unlivable uh, for many decades. So uh, what what basically is uh, unpredictable is the impact as well as uh, so uh, it is basically uh, we can say. Uh, uh, it would be a kind of uh, thing that uh, 
that would be unplanned so uh, uh, things will can take place so so we can say so uh, 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 uncontro in a so uncontrollable manner that uh, at, uh, it would be difficult to manage these things so and uh, at the last uh, author talks about uh, a philosoph philosophical issue uh, so he talks about shri aurobindo who was a, who was a renowned thinker in india's struggle for independence so author says that once he said that uh, that uh, this uh, uh, the world uh, he he says that he wanted that uh, uh, the world union forming the outer basis of a fairer and brighter noble nobler life for all kind so he, if this was his aim so he wanted that uh, uh, dreams uh, of the future must be that there must be a world union forming the outer basis of a fairer brighter and nobler world world of life for all mankind so then uh, he said that uh, obviously uh, human unity was an inevitable step of evolution so you might be aware of the evolutionary process so uh, in this context the view of the bindo ghosh was that uh, uh, ultimately the everything will lead to is uh, um, into a to a stage of evolution in which human uh, unity will emerge but then uh, author uh, then his view was also that uh, before emerging such uh, 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 unity there could be a catastrophe that could intervene or can interrupt or destroy what is being done so this is basically author says that this farming has uh, always haunted uh, him, uh, him. Uh, that is the author so Al albert einstein has also said that uh, uh, this unleashing of the power of atom bomb has changed everything except our mode of thinking and thus we had to uh, head towards unparalleled catastrophes so so here author uh, then uh, there must be uh, then uh, uh, author talks about pakistan and that pakistan government must also ensure that uh, there is no major terrorist attack on uh, on india from the uh, from the soil of pakistan because that would be catastrophic and uh, and also it will not be just in its own interest but also in the interest of the india so but also in the interest of humanity as well so trigger for basically in this context the trigger trigger for conflict lies clearly in pakistan and, and the terrorists hold the key to this entire peace process so we must step up measures uh, uh, and uh, we also must cl clearly tell them that this trigger or key for for a possible escalation is with you so if you take any step that anything can happen then anything can happen so it would be better to diplomatically engage and communicate to the, them this and this must not be done in an aggressive manner and this must be communicated uh, with a serious note that uh, uh, that uh, obviously things can go out of control so uh, entire article is about basically unpredictability then also then author says that we mean by we are also uh, turning towards this uh, hyper nationalism or hyper trumpism so they, uh, this also uh, lessens the rigid positions obvious, obviously or polarized positions obviously uh, lead uh, lead to a very constricted number of choices so in, in this context uh, uh, the focus must be on fighting our common enemies that of, of india and pakistan that is the poverty malnutrition unemployment and retarded economic growth so here author then uh, talks about arthur postler uh, who was also a european philosopher so he held that uh, human ro uh, race is programmed for self destruction because there is a defect in human mind that is feeling and thinking elements are in in adequately ad adequately integrated so uh, what the author wants to say is that this uh, philosopher that is arthur postler uh, he said that uh, uh, what human beings think it is not necessary that uh, they will feel also the same because uh, a person can feel it is uh, can think that it is wrong but he can if he, he, he may still face the feel the arts to do it so in this context he gives the example of duryodhan uh, uh, a play, uh, uh, important a uh, significant character in mahabharata uh, so who said uh, that oh, i know what is right but i am not attracted to it and also he said that i know what is wrong but i am attracted to it so i as against this uh, uh, the, the great evolutionary philosopher uh, Sri Aurobindo holds that uh, the human race is programmed for evol uh, for uh, your uh, evolution. So it remains to be seen that how the entire process unfolds, whether we turn towards uh, this catastrophe or we we transform into a, a world that is uh, that is based upon hum uh, human human uh, unity. And then uh, jury is out on this existential question. So to conclude, the author says that uh, 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 the uh, author agrees with the Rabindo Ghosh uh, view, uh, but then it uh, he also uh, wants to conclude with a simple uh, uh, a limb line brick he had heard. He says that God's plan made a hopeful beginning, and but man spoiled his chances by sinning. So we know that the story will end in God's glory, but at present the other side is winning. 
side is winning so that is a grim reminder to us that uh, what is happening uh, so and to what uh, to where, where we are hiding so it must be uh, it is it is it is imperative upon us to think upon such things so this is about this article that is future tense then uh, the other article is the great wall ahead so this article we will not go into that detail but i will give you a brief idea about what the what the author wants to suggest so here the author uh, uh, says that uh, uh, earlier uh, there was a view in 20th century that, that only the liberal markets, the western liberal markets can grow. Uh, prosperity, economic prosperity can come only in uh, such markets. But then rise of China uh, changed the whole narrative in which it was seen that a totalitarian state can also clock higher growth rates. But now author talks about uh, uh, that uh, now, what is the situation as of now in China. So author says that as of now uh, Xi Jinping is controlling the presidency of the China so under his presidency is uh, uh, he is talking about uh, we can say uh, re rejuvenation of China or uh, uh, the uh, China the great rejuvenation of Chinese nation so in the name of it he is uh, uh, we can say centralizing the entire power and is take, uh, taking uh, uh, consolidation of his power and uh, all limits have been re removed so Xi Jinping is president for life so also then deepening authoritarianism is there and enhanced curbs are there on freedom of individuals and surveillance activities of China's uh, citizens uh, uh, is widely known so in this context author says that uh, this uh, uh, the the China has uh, has uh, renounced just uh, its earlier approach that was uh, that was propounded by Deng uh, uh, Deng that was the earlier premier of China. So he uh, he said that hide your strength, bide your time. But now China, what is it is doing is it is uh, it is uh, 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 it is showing uh, it is trying uh, trying to show its uh, uh, global aspirations. So it is also uh, it, it it is trying to challenge the American dominance in the Asia Pacific. So this uh, uh, th this gives a reference to this, uh, thinly wheeled aspirations towards global hegemony of China. So, but then author says that uh, the issue is basically of the Chinese economy, so which is unbalanced. So uh, earlier it was excessively reliant on exports and uh, and uh, and the and the uh, debt, uh, which de debt financial investment for growth. But now this these economic reforms uh, 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 were taken, but uh, but the, still there are overdue economic reforms are there. And uh, then deleveraging uh, again was the uh, focus of uh, of the Xi Jinping when he took over the presidency. But uh, to uh, deal all these measures, uh, so uh, and uh, uh, the Xi Jinping, that is the premier of China, is also these uh, uh, the fear of. Uh, 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 political loss of political control and also he strongly disagrees or uh, dis, uh, he has a strong distrust of market mechanism due to which everything is moving towards uh, com command and control measures that is everything is being controlled by the government and power of the government is expanding so future role of the private sector which, uh, which was an earlier major contributor to the Chinese growth story is also under palpable strain so in this context uh, the, the author says that uh, obviously uh, the predictions were earlier made that uh, and the Chinese economy would ultimately slow down, but the, but now the slowdown is very deep. So author says that uh, industrial production has now slipped to 18 years low, and also GDP growth rate uh, is lowest in 27 years. So debt levels are also high. So debt level is currently 310 percent of the GDP, according to the Institute of Interna uh, International Finance. So uh, coupled with the large uh, unregulated, uh, unregulated shadow, shadow banking sector that pose huge uh, systematic risk. Deli uh, then also in this context author says that uh, systematic risks are there. So deleveraging is not a viable option as of now because growth is slowing down. So uh, the government is uh, government uh, must focus upon the investment but uh, in that context obviously deleveraging that is clearing one's, uh, one's debts it is difficult. So also now, but due to reforms, the trade is now has now become a minor a minor factor in growth equation because there is ongoing trade war between U.S. and China, and also then investment and domestic consumption are the main drivers of the uh, growth. So investment will come from the uh, the government, but then domestic consumption depends upon uh, a number of uh, a number of myriad individual decisions as also consumer sentiment. 
so individual decisions and consumer sentiment have been dampened by this uh, 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 the, this trade war that is going on between china and us and infrastructure especially the housing sector was excessively followed earlier and now there has been uh, there has been a quite large inventory that is lying unsold so focusing upon it would for uh, give further stimulus uh, um, or giving further stimulus to it would be a risky strategy so also then author says that the hong kong protests are going on and it have it has it has the ramifications for the chinese mainland also so uh, then china uh, also then hong kong protests uh, have caught this uh, uh, the authorities of the china in a in a clap stick because of the serious future ramifications of any steps that they may take at this juncture and not only on the future of hong kong but also on taiwan and the mainland taiwan and mainland so in this context also says that after, after uh, several decades of exceptional growth so china is currently the second largest economy in the world in terms of nominal gdp which is around two thirds of the size of the us but when we go to the uh, when we see the per capita gdp then it is still a middle income country ranked at 79 position and its uh, per capita income is just one third of uh, uh, one third of uh, <coughs> gdp per capita is one third of uh, uh, of us so it is at 79 position so it is nowhere comparable to us as still now so obviously strong headwinds are there that china is facing as a consequence of uh, growing state control and as well as expansion of the state owned companies the competition is also increasing and uh, productivity is being affected productivity growth is being affected and in fact uh, the china uh, which which uh, uh, tilted towards uh, uh, we can say uh, higher growth strategy by adopting uh, policies due to which higher growth were uh, higher growth was clogged but china is now reversing all those strategies and uh, the, there is a kind of drag on ideology drag of ideology in the economic management because Ch china still is a communist uh, uh, country and uh, uh, this uh, this problem this drag of ideology is exasperating the ongoing growth slowdown uh, so on the external front also china has to move uh, prudently but uh, china which used to move prudently has uh, has prematurely started to uh, assert itself and this has kind of shifted a focus on it uh, had uh, he uh, had the china uh, Listen to the advice of Dan. Uh, that is, uh, hide your strength and bide your time. Uh, it would have been a, a bad, better choice for uh, China, but now it is prematurely exerting it and exerting it due to which the gl the global limelight is coming on it. Due to which, uh, for example, US is taking measures to control its rise. So then, author said says that, that in the end, it concludes that no totalitarian uh, 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 country has in the past achieved the levels of prosperity that is be, that is there in the democracies of the market democracies of the developed world. So the question here that will that will remain to be answered is that whether uh, will the China that is shackled by the ideology as well as structures of economic management, such structures that are controlled by the government, excessively controlled by the government. Uh, uh, in that context, will the China be able to uh, uh, become the first country to to achieve that uh, uh, that that uh, uh, the target of coming out of middle income trap? So this is the a question that that the author asked in the end. So obviously the the future things that will unfold will be the answer will will provide the answer to this question. Now other article which we want to discuss is about China. So a more equal friendship. So we will not go into that detail, but this article is important, especially in the context of a recent visit of a Chinese premier to India, uh, that is Xi Jinping, and then afterwards to Nepal. So in this context, author says that there is an emerging narrative that uh, Nepal is uh, uh, moving uh, in moving towards uh, uh, is tilting towards the China. So then author says that uh, this is questionable. So also other thing is that this is also questionable that whether India has maintained a hegemonic position position over Nepal, Nepal. So the uh, author says that uh, in the beginning of uh, in the beginning of uh, 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 the years when we got independence, uh, we inherited uh, from the British Raj the relationship that we had with Nepal. So at that time, Nawa Nepal was basically a protectorate state. But then uh, also in the beginning, uh, uh, we 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 uh, we we inherited this uh, um, protectorate thing. But uh, but uh, but then China uh, Nepal uh, Nepal was a kind of we can say separate uh, uh, national entity. 
see so in this context the rise of china and uh, consequently also the focus of the india on its uh, on its economic self sufficiency uh, adversely affected Indi india nepal relationship because nepal uh, is a landlocked country and it is dependent upon uh, uh, de dependent upon the trade it do uh, uh, it does it does with its neighboring countries so in this context uh, not only politically we committed mistake by thinking that uh, we, uh, this uh, uh, the relationship that uh, that we inherited from the british raj that is a protectorate will will uh, will sustain itself because obviously it, it was unsustainable uh, uh, especially when nepal uh, became a nation state so the, in that context then other mistake of india was there in context of uh, economic policy in which we excessively focused upon economic self sufficiency in the beginning years uh, beginning years of independence and we we didn't uh, give the due regard that we, we must had given to uh, the uh, the nepal uh, nepal's economy so obviously then sino indian conflict was there in which uh, china won and this uh, uh, this uh, uh, led to the situation that uh, china uh, then uh, this led to a situation in which nepal started thinking about uh, uh, balancing its relationship uh, with china as well so in this context uh, author basically says that uh, uh Kathmandu as of now has three options the first option is maintaining a strict symmetry with china and india that is maintaining a strict balance and other option is that uh, then tilting towards uh, china uh, then third option is um, act of dynamic balancing that is uh, balancing various uh, uh, policy measures or initiatives that nepal takes um, uh, with china and india so dynamic uh, dynamic bal balancing that would be the, the third option so in this context author says that the first option that is strict symmetry will not be possible because strict symmetry will will uh, then lead to lead to uh, we can say uh, that uh, that that uh, uh, for example as of now nepal, uh, nepal the citizens of nepal have free access to india so they can live and make their living in india so obviously strict symmetry would demand that re reversal of this uh, this uh, this kind kind of uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, 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 this kind, uh, this kind of re rearrangement in relation with vis a vis vis India, so that would China, uh, that would uh, Nepal will not be uh, uh, will be interested to do. And second thing uh, that is tilting towards China is also uh, quite uh, costly for the China uh, Nepal because. Uh, uh, because it can do but then obviously uh, india will take counter measures as well as uh, india will uh, will focus upon uh, how to uh, we can say uh, here let me tell you i'm not able to recall so special relationship uh, yeah so three possible options are there as i have told you so if nepal opts for strict symmetry it would have to turn its open border with india into a closed one similar to its northern frontier with china so other thing is that a considered strategic tilt uh, towards china will mean that Kathmandu would want to disregard the special privilege it has uh, in its relationship with the, in, with india for example that there is a freedom of nepali citizens to live and work in india so then uh, nepal's choice also would uh, would also involve an assessment of the inevitable Indian countermeasures that the Indian establishment would take uh, if, if in case if in any case uh, Kathmandu tilted towards Beijing then third option that is the involvement uh, third uh, the, uh, third option that is maintaining it uh, doing a delicate work of uh, 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 dynamic balancing so it would involve uh, a modernization of India relationship and expansion of China ties with sufficient regard to uh, concerns of both the powers so in this context uh, uh, Nepal would have to uh, consider the con uh, interests of both India and China and then uh, it, would, uh, it would address all those concerns and will also maximize its uh, uh, engagement with any of these two powers. And then Nepalese have also talked, uh, often talked about themselves to be a bridge between two nations but the economic, political and security implications are yet to be we can say um, uh, highlighted because uh, if, if, if uh, though Nepal, Nepal is saying that it would act as a bridge between two nations but the question remains whether India want to accept this as a uh, 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 itself as a bridge uh, uh, Nepal as a bridge between India and China at the end uh, also then author suggests very important thing that is uh, uh, we must have that attitude of a big brother towards Nepal that we had uh, in the in the years uh, since independence because ultimately uh, Nepal is seeing its 
itself to be a nation state and yes it is and domestic politics is also uh, uh, more uh, in, uh, more focused upon the thing that uh, the uh, nepali intellectuals are thinking that uh, it, this attitude of india is uh, is unwelcomed and unwarranted because obviously they they also want that they also they uh, they, they say that we know what is good for it for for uh, for nepal so obviously new delhi's attitude that is uh, to claim that we know what is good for uh, nepal that irritates them most so in this context uh, author suggests that it would be uh, good that uh, new delhi should let nepalis decide what is good for them and uh, tailor india's own responses accordingly so we must not focus upon uh, we must not expect uh, uh, from uh, nepal uh, everything so we must focus upon how the Chinese nepalis decide and we can then accordingly take our uh, we can take our, our own decisions and can respond to the emerging dynamics in with 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 the with the keeping with our interests in mind so india has also said that uh, uh, india has uh, had uh, india has had its share of strategic areas errors in dealing with nepal but then author says in the end that the best corrective uh, uh, option that delhi uh, new delhi can offer to the nepal is a compact that can build on natural and cultural independence natural geographic and cultural independence between the two nations so also then uh, uh, this relationship the new compact that is based upon uh, geographical and cultural uh, interdependence as, as it must be on equal footing so uh, india mu must set that attitude of uh, big brother so it, mu uh, it must see nepal as a sovereign and uh, uh, they must it, it, they, they, it must nepal uh, nepal must be viewed with a with the angle of sovereign equality and mutual benefit so it is up to uh, Kathmandu or nepal uh, to accept uh, this uh, compact uh, or reject this compact or negotiate negotiate on such an offer so this was basically the articles of today's Indian Express, so the video has uh, stretched for, um, for too long, so it is already 40 minutes. But friends, ultimately the things were important, so I decided that I will discuss in detail. So if you like this discussion, then do ensure that you like it, share it with your friends, and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel. And lastly, friends, we have a Telegram channel also, the link of which is given in description box. So you can check the description box and can can join our Telegram channel. Where have we have more than fourteen thousand subscribers, uh, students following us. So if in case you wish to uh, uh, if wish to access to uh, if you want to access our public resources that we have for the purpose of CSC preparation, then do ensure that you join our Telegram channel. So the link is given in the description box so this is all about today's video thank you friends have a very nice day ahead.